He's sick of it. I highly doubt it. Talk to me. Of course, it's Al with the sleeping dogs. Yeah? What about them? Looks like they counted their last sheep. So it does. How long will it take to get Operation Xerox into place? Less than a minute, boss. Go to it. And Al? Yeah, boss. Don't be surprised if there's a couple extra zeros in your next paycheck. Thanks, boss. I really appreciate it. And Al? Yeah, boss. Don't be surprised if there isn't. I understand. <laughs> Good morning. Where are we? Where's our son? Oh, can we see our son? Absolutely. Just follow me. We got a limo waiting for you outside with coffee and some nice hot Danish. Oh, that sounds good. I won't lie to you. I seem to have worked up a bit of an appetite. Honey? I could eat. Right this way. Sack the quarterback. Here we go. Hey. Oh. Touchdown. Yeah. You faked me right out of my socks. North, great catch, buddy. Come and get it. Oh, here we go. It's so great having you here, North. I've always wanted a brother to throw to. Yeah, and now I have two big brothers to look out for me. Hey, I know we're all excited to have North as part of our family, but he hasn't decided if he wants to stay with us yet. Come on, North. You gotta stay. Yeah, we really want you. Help yourself, everybody. Dig in. Mom, can we go to the carnival tomorrow? Yeah, can we? I don't see why not. Or? Sounds good to me. North, we miss you so much. Please forgive us. We made so many mistakes. We should have appreciated you more. If only you could give us just one more chance. We love you, son. We love you very much. <gasps> Cut! Very nice. Very, very nice. Touching, moving, and yet not over the top. We were all here. So, crazy summer, huh? Ugh, terrible. Very disturbing. Look, I know what you're going through. But even if North doesn't come back, you can always adopt. Just the other day, I met this adorable little boy, seven years old. His name was Hugh. Maybe you can adopt him. Maybe Hugh can be your son. We don't want Hugh. He's not our son. We want North. I understand. It was insensitive of me to even bring it up. Uh, you folks want some more coffee? Nah, that's OK. Not for me. Well, I still don't understand why we can't speak to North in person. I, I think that would be a big mistake. North is very angry right now. He's very sensitive. You show up unannounced, and this whole thing could blow up in your face. And it would just kill me to see a thing like that happen. So my suggestion is you lay low for a while. I'll have someone escort you to the plaza. I already told Jean-Pierre to give you all the room service you want. And as North's best friend, I'd be more than happy to show him this tape to pave the way for you. Thank you, Winter. Oh, yes. You're a real friend. I do what I can. Bring the car around for North folks. Yes, sir. Consider it done. You know, you're doing very well for a sixth grader. Eh, I caught a few breaks. How I was, uh... And I'm gonna take the tape down to editing. <sighs> Colonel Mustard yeah. in the study with throat. I don't have any of those. Neither do I. Me neither. neither. See, Colonel Mustard in the study, and here's the rope. I was gonna say, <laughs> right. good job, kitten. Can we play again? No, yeah. you guys have to hit the set. Come on, you got a big day tomorrow. You don't want to be tired for the carnival. Your mom's you? right. Everybody, run upstairs to bed right now. Let's go. Okay. Good night, Mom. Good night. Good night, Nora. Good night, Mom. Nice night. Brush your teeth before you go to bed. <laughs> Thank you. 
I'm sorry to bother you at this late hour, but I got something important here for a kid named North. What is it? Apparently, it's an urgent message from his original parents. I'll see that he gets it. Thank you. North, honey? Yeah? Can you come down here for a minute? Coming! What is it? North, a man just came by and left this tape for you. Says it's a message from your parents. From my parents? Do you mind if I... Of course not. Would you like to be alone, North? No, that's okay. After all you two have been through, what would you most like to say to your son? We don't want you. How can you say that? He's your son. He's not our son. Aren't you bothered by the prospect of never seeing your son again? Nah, that's okay. Isn't this a gut-wrenching, torturous, emotional experience? Not for me. He's not our son. We don't want you. North, honey, are you okay? Is there anything we can do for you? Yeah. Let me be your son. Finally, North had new parents. Parents who made him feel wanted, secure, and loved. Yet something was still wrong. The Nelsons were everything he was looking for, so why couldn't he embrace them? North needed answers. North, we just don't understand why you're leaving. Neither do I. You're all nice people, and I, I'm really going to miss you. But I've just got to be alone. I'm going to miss you, too. <clears throat> and so will Oliver. North? Here. In case you get hungry on your way to New York. Thanks, Mom. I mean, Mrs. Nelson. Bye. So, with just 24 hours until his Labor Day deadline, no hope of parents, and the prospect of living in an orphanage looming, North felt he only had one option left. He would disappear. More hope acht. I can't stop thinking. Can you spare some extra change? Oh. Hey, it's got a hole in it! What good does this do me? Yes, he would disappear. And where better to do that than amidst the teeming, faceless masses of the naked city? Heading into the park. Don't worry, boss. I'm just looking for the right time and the right place. So long, Al. What was that all about? Well, it seems that our young friends had a change of heart. Change of heart? He's left the Nelsons and has decided to grace our fair city with his presence. Oh, no. Oh, this ruins everything. Oh, I so much wanted to be president, to live in the White House. I even ordered stationary, and I already told my mother. She told everyone in the building. This is going to be so embarrassing when I go home for the holidays. Maybe I just won't go home for the holidays. Maybe I'll never go home. I'll just live in a cardboard box in the subway. Wrap a plastic garbage bag around me. I want to get schooled. 
I'm so cold. I'm so cold. Well, that was an attractive display. Arthur, use your head. This is a godsend. It is? Of course. Do you realize how many angry parents there are out there who would like nothing better than to do away with our little friend? Well, look at it this way. You like cooking, don't you, Arthur? <clears throat> Relaxes me. Okay. So you tell me, what do you get when you take a great political movement, heat it over a low flame until it's almost at the boiling point, and add a pinch of murder? President. A great president. <laughs> I mean, you're a genius. <laughs> oh, this is absolutely Winchellian. For North to be a martyr, doesn't he have to be killed by one of those angry parents? Well, maybe we'll get lucky. As North ran for his life, he couldn't help but wonder how his dream of finding the perfect parents had turned into a nightmare. You never saw me. We're not even having this conversation right now. Got that? Got what? Perfect. So what are we not talking about? This. What? I don't see anything. Exactly. What you don't see is a tape of the conversation which you have with your parents. I saw it. No, you didn't. Oh, I forgot. I didn't see it. No, you did see it. And this is what you didn't see when you saw it. I see. I don't think you do. Look at the tape. So, how'd you find me? Wouldn't you? You bugged the Nelson's phones. Wouldn't you? Shh. It's everywhere. I've been looking for him ever since you left home. You know, some guy was chasing me with the gun. He was shooting at me. That didn't have anything to do with Wouldn't you, did it? Oh, man. So, why are you doing this? I'm not. But if I was, because I think Winch was going too far. Also, you were always good to me, North. You never picked me last. You never made me play right field. I'll never forget that. Thanks, Adam. Oh, man. Adam, I, I just don't feel safe anywhere. Adam? Adam? With just mustard? That'll be a dollar. Out of five. Two, three, four, five. There you go. Where'd you get this? Some bum bought a hot dog for me about an hour ago. Why? 
No reason. See him no more. Watch, 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 watch. He sits down next to a very beautiful young lady. Before you know it, the conversation turns to sex. He says to her, my darling, do you smoke after you make love? She says, I don't know. I never looked. But I'll tell you one thing. My smoke alarm never went off. <laughs> Good night, folks. You've been great. Thank you. You the kid with the tape? Yeah. Good. Come on in. I want to try out my new VCR. How did you know? What's that, kid? Well, I just came to see you because I thought you looked familiar. Of course I look familiar. I'm almost famous. Joey Fingers, nice to see you. And you are? North. Always been one of my favorite directions. Malamar? No, thanks. That bad, huh? What? No kid ever refuses a Malamar unless he's wrestling with some pretty heavyweight problems. North? We miss you so much. Please forgive us. We made so many mistakes. We should have appreciated you more. If only you could give us just one more chance. We love you, son. We love you very much. Beautiful. Works like a charm. Got some pretty nice folks there, kid. You said you got some pretty nice folks there. Yeah. I guess so. What do you mean, you guess so? Well, I mean... And what do they mean by give us one more chance? I thought they didn't love me. What are you, nuts? That's just the thing. They didn't always pay that much attention to me. So I left them to find some new folks who'd appreciate me more. I searched the whole world, but nobody was good enough. Not even the Nelsons, who I just left. And they weren't bad folks. Maybe there's something wrong with me. Ah, there's nothing wrong with you. And I'm sure the Nelsons weren't bad folks. They just weren't your folks. You see those people out there? That audience? They paid attention to me. They listened to every word I said. They laughed, they screamed, they applauded. They loved me. But do you think that audience is going to make me a cup of tea if I'm not feeling well? Do you think they're going to give me advice when I get in a fight with my best friend? Or... God forbid I get in girl trouble. What do you think I'm going to turn to? I'll give you a hint. It's not that audience. Oh, my God. What have I done? I'll tell you what you've done. You've realized something that takes most people a whole lifetime to figure out. And some people never figure it out at all. 
that a bird in the hand is always greener than the grass under the other guy's bushes. It's a metaphor used mostly by gardeners and landscape people in general. Hey, kid! Hey, kid! Where are you going? Home. I miss my parents. Well, how are you going to get to the airport? You got a car? No, I'm 11. All right, then we better take mine. Thanks for everything, Mr. Fingers. Make it Joey, and you're welcome. And remember, kid, if you can't stand the heat, stay out of Miami. Well, what does that metaphor mean? What metaphor? You ever been down there in August? Your balls stick to your leg like crazy glue. Goodbye. And so, North finally found the parents he'd always been looking for. Much to his surprise, they were his own. So it was with a song in his heart and a smile on his face that North prepared to board the final plane that would take him back to the loving arms of those very parents. Where do you think you're going? I'm going home. Not on this plane, you're not. Why not? It says here you're dead. But I'm not. How can I be sure? I'm standing here talking to you. I know, and that scares me. And since I don't scare easily, you can imagine how it will affect the other passengers. But I'm not dead. Sorry, son, I can't take that chance. Hey, it's North. He's alive. What's he doing here? This plane's headed to his hometown. He's trying to get back to his old parent. It'll ruin everything. Let's get him. Hey! Oh my God. What are you? Some kind of guardian angel? Well, I guess you can say that. Because in a manner of speaking, we at Federal Express feel that we are guardians. Guardians of your most important packages and priority communiques. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just get me home, will ya? Well, you absolutely positively have to be home by tomorrow morning. You've come to the right truck. Man, you don't let up for a second, do you? I have no idea what you're talking about. I have no idea what you're talking about. Just tell me what to do, okay? Get in. Federal Express, huh? Okay, thanks. Oh, well. Can I have a word with you? Oh, sure, boss. Remember when you told me North was dead? Yeah. Uh, just curious. What'd you base that on? I can only assume that you think this is blood, Al. And if I had an IQ below 24, I suppose I might think the same. But the stain in his cap comes from borscht. Borscht? Yes, borscht. A beef based soup, Russian in origin, most frequently served chilled with a dollop of sour cream. I make a good borscht. And I'd love to sample it someday. But the point I'm making here, Al, is that unless North's head was filled with this traditional Slavic delicacy. He's not dead, you idiot! Oh, no! This not means now, I'm... Arthur. All right, all right. This just calls for a slight change in plans. I'll take it from here. All right. Sign on the fourth line. What time is it? Well, normally, my answer would be no later than 10.30, but thanks to that jackknife truck on the highway, I'm sorry to say it's almost 10 of 12. We'll, we'll be happy to refund your... No, that's okay! Mr. Summer was an enjoyable one. Where are my folks? Well, they're at a safe place. 
Where the hell are my parents? The North. Did you say the word hell? Uh, the summer's really broadened you. Rachel, I've got exactly ten minutes to find my parents. And if you don't tell me where they are, I'll show you how much this summer's broadened me, you little asshole! Why are you smiling? I was just thinking what a beautiful, heartwarming scene it's going to be when you're reunited with your parents at that secret spot of yours. How do you know about my secret spot? I'm a journalist, North. It's my job to know about these things. And as much as I'm enjoying this little chat, shouldn't you be on your way? After all, you're down to nine minutes. Winchell said he'd be here by now. Don't worry, honey. I'm sure he'll be here soon. Soon may not be good enough. Let me remind you, I've been sent here by the court to ensure that your son is physically in your arms by 12 o'clock noon. How much time is left? Six minutes. And that's my own clock from my own house. <laughs> Honey, 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 what if we leave here and then North shows up and then we miss him? Mm. Relax, honey. Winchell's a man of his word. Hey, he has less than one minute. All right, you wait here. I'll go look for him. Good idea. Bad idea. Let me remind you, the ruling stipulates that North is supposed to be in the arms of both parents. That's two parents and four arms. If one of you leaves, we're down to one parent, two arms. The math speaks for itself. Still here? Yeah. I must have fallen asleep. Come on. I'll give you a ride home. And then you were a beach bum. And then you drove a sleigh. And then you were a comedian who said that my parents were the best parents for me. I said that? Yeah. I must be a pretty smart guy. What's that? Oh, nothing. Just something I've always had. You know, for good luck. Yeah, well, maybe good luck for you. I bet that eagle's whistling a little different tune. Here we go. 35 Maple Drive. Thanks a lot, mister. Don't mention it, kid. And remember, be it ever so humble, there's no place like home. With the possible exception of Vegas when Sinatra's in town. Bye. Where were you? We were worried sick. 
fell asleep in the mall. <laughs> we called the hospitals. We called the police. Oh, we looked everywhere. You did? Of course we did. We love you so much, love. If anything ever happened to you, I, I don't know what we'd do. I love you guys, too. Come on. You hungry, honey? A little bit. A little bit? A little bit. Okay, a lot. Okay. <laughs> I tell you what, you run upstairs, put on your pajamas. We'll bring something up for you and tuck you in. Okay. Honey, by the way, Winchell called, and he said he hopes you're not still angry at him for putting that picture of you in your underwear in the school newspaper. No. That's okay. Oh, North, we are so happy that you're home. Mm. Mm. Come on! Come on! I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And just when we were reaching for each other, I got shot in the back. And that's when I woke up. Boy. That was quite a dream. You know, North, honey, um, Daddy and I are only human, and sometimes we get a little preoccupied, but that never ever means that we don't love you. I know. It's still no excuse for us not to listen, Bella. I know. <laughs> I tell you what, from now on, we're both going to try a little harder, OK, son? Thanks, Daddy. Good night, Bobby. Good night, Mom. Good night, kiddo. Good night, Dad. Oh, Dad, tomorrow do you think we can... You know the pants with the ripped holes, they put it on purpose? To me, those are not real jeans. You see this rash? It spells the Hillman's will only take the ball pants. My day, pants with holes, you put in the box, you sent to the Salvation Army. Today's high style, you see a push sticking out. Van Kamp schoon de mist in Freddy. Zelfs een vaste met Rissen weet van niks. Ze zijn nu de passagierslijst op de luchthaven en checken. Gevlucht naar het buitenland. Is dat de piste? Zijn daar concrete indicaties voor of is dat bezigheidstherapie? Concrete indicaties. Bezigheidstherapie.